Well, here we are with one of the most exciting moments for me, an interview with Jeffrey Deaver, and we are at the Atlanta Fulton County Public Library Buckhead Branch in Buckhead section of Atlanta. And Jeffrey's up here for your book tour. I am indeed, Jeff. You know, how extensive, how long are you going to be on the road? Well, you could also ask how long have I been on the road? Oh, you, this is the middle of it. I got back from, uh, I've done uh, Spain, uh, Germany. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Euro crisis now, but I have been in Spain and Germany and in England on uh, rather an extensive tour. I've done a few little events in America, but now I am uh, just starting my U.S. tour for EXO. And how long will it last? Oh, well, it's only about three and a half weeks, not true. Okay. okay. But how was it being in Europe and did they know you? They, I know you're, it says, international best-selling author. So. Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, in some countries I do better than in others. In, uh, in France, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm probably pretty good to uh, go to a restaurant and order moule frites or something yeah. without being recognized. In Italy, um, Spain, Germany, Japan, Amsterdam, I get recognized quite a bit. South Africa, uh, some places in the Middle East. Uh, I'll walk down the street and people will actually come up and ask for an autograph. And I, I, I never get tired of it. It's, it's very exciting. That's fun. Isn't yeah, it? it's very exciting. But I don't know why, but it sticks in my head that this is like your 28th book, your new one, XO. If, if we don't talk about the first two egregiously bad <laughs> novels, I think it, it comes in about 28. But I had a couple of those in my early days that I don't like to talk about. Of course, I, I think I discovered you when I started the Lincoln Rhyme. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was the Bone Collector. Bone you Collector, first yes. Me very kindly, I recall. And I was hooked. And you've got that series, uh, Amelia Sachs, Lincoln Rhyme, and then you also have the Catherine Dance series, which is, this is, EXO is the fourth novel in the Catherine Dance? Well, it's, uh, it's three and a half, because three and a half. see what I did, I'm very um, manipulative and yes, calculated. Thank you, I consider that a compliment. <laughs> it I is. I, uh, I, I love Lincoln Rhyme, and, and the viewers who may know Lincoln Rhyme from The Bone Collector and the um, uh, roughly 10 other books in and the series. And the movie starring Denzel Washington and Angelina Jolie. They, they will know that he's a forensic scientist, and that kind of limits the type of crime and evil I can write about, because there has to be a clue, there has to be a little bit of that fingerprint or the hair or the trace evidence that Lincoln works with to find the bad guy. There's a lot of other crime out there that doesn't involve evidence. So an example, for instance, I based my uh, Catherine Dance novel on uh, the, uh, it was, uh, the Sleeping Doll on Charles Manson. Now, Manson is in prison for the rest of his life. Right. We hope, I especially hope, in case he reads The Sleeping Doll, because I wasn't too complimentary <laughs> to him about that. He never was at the crime scene, the Sharon Tate crime scene. He was never there. He told other people yeah, to go do it. So, so there was really no evidence for Lincoln to uh, be able to track him down. I decided to create a new heroine, Catherine Dance, who delves into the psychology of crime more. Now, Catherine is a kinesics expert, a body language expert, and she will interrogate people, uh, learn from the fact they sit like this, or they rub their beard or scratch their cheek. She'll begin to deduce if they're telling the truth or not. There's really no forensics involved in my Catherine Dance books, but um, there, there's a great deal of uh, psychological element of uh, crime solving. Well, I decided I wanted to create a new character. And being the manipulative, calculating person that I was, I wanted to try this character out because I, I write for my fans. I want to make sure they would be happy and they'd enjoy the character. So I introduced Catherine in The Cold Moon, a Lincoln Rhyme novel. And uh, I was going to plan on spinning her off if the fans liked her. And I, I read my emails and I read the reviews after The Cold Moon came out, uh, yours among them, which was quite kind. I will thank you again for that. And um, fans I, loved it. It's hardly been a book of yours that I haven't loved. You know, the, the, I, someday you ought to write a really bad review, uh, Jackie. Well, I was I'm crazy about the James Bond. Oh, okay, thank you. I feel Remember much better. Remember that? I feel, I feel better. But you yeah. were still kind. I, well, I, I will say you were, a you, you great were, writer. I would say you were articulate about it. You pointed out some valid, uh, some valid concerns. But Catherine did well in The Cold Moon, so I spun her off, and we had first uh, the, um, uh, the Sleeping Doll, which I mentioned, then Roadside Crosses, and now she's back in XO. But Jeffrey, ever since I started reading you, and you talk about being manipulative, but you, you know so much. I don't know how you know the technology that you, that you just 
lay out in your books and you integrate it in the story that it's not like you're reading along, da 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 oh, let's stop for technology, boom, da 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 It's integrated into it. But I just accept everything you say is true because I know if I ever looked it up, you'd be right on the money. But in this book, you talk about the different guitars that are musical instruments that are there, the, the different sound systems, the a trillion things. Where do you get that stuff from? You were a lawyer. You're not supposed to know all that. Well, um, first of all, Jackie, it's very interesting. We hear the old adage that one has to write what one knows about. Well, that's absolutely true. But that's not to say that one can't learn a topic. And 99% of my books are not the least autobiographical. I, um, I was an attorney. I was a journalist as well. And in both of those professions, you learn how to research. You learn to find the relevant facts. And relevant is the key word because, um, as you mentioned, I'll be reading along in a book, and I won't mention any names, but you know, you see it a little more in these, what we call techno thrillers, military thrillers, mm -hmm. and the story comes screeching to a halt. Absolutely. And you get page after page, or sometimes chapter after chapter, of um, what I consider irrelevant uh, minutiae, information, and you keep thinking there's going to be a payoff. Every word in a thriller, in fact, I'll go so far as to say every word in a novel, has to have a meaning. It has to either further the story or enhance our understanding of the characters. Um, and if you're going to put in facts, I make sure they pay off. Um, XO, for instance, uh, a book set in the music industry, I had a little knowledge uh, about. I was a singer songwriter a long, long time ago. In, in those, back in those days when they had those, remember those big black CDs? Oh. Remember those that you put down sideways and put a needle on? A lot of, lot of, lot of kids don't know about those now. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. Okay, but well, oddly enough, there's a resurgence. And in fact, the album that uh, a music production company and I did for XO, which we can talk about in a bit if you like, just met with them yesterday and we are pressing vinyl. We are doing actual vinyl albums. These are uh, going to be very high quality and somewhat expensive, uh, very faithful sound-wise. I was going to say because for sound quality, that's where the, the I've heard the best. difference, and there's it, it's it's astonishing. I still have a lot of my old uh, albums. I won't tell you the artists because that'll give my age away. But uh, I, well, I'm not going to mention Elvis Presley and Simon and Garfunkel and so forth. Peter I never Paul heard of them. Okay, good. <laughs> good. I, I I knew you were a Lady Gaga man. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, you know, and this cover, I know she's out of country, but it looks like Lindsay Lohan. Oh, it does. Actually, I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> but, but in this book, not only if you've got a fantastic story, but then at the very end, uh, you have the girl singer who the story is about. And you've got all the lyrics yeah. that you wrote to her fictional album plus the music, and then where can you go to listen to the whole thing? Yeah, well, what, what we decided to do, I say we, I had, um, uh, I, I believe in um, combination of media and entertainment. It's, it's a whole new ballgame nowadays, and I write uh, thriller novels, um, and they stand alone. I mean, you could pick this up and read it from page one to the end. It's, uh, I hope it, it's exciting. I hope you like the characters and my twists and turns and so forth. But there are a lot of folks out there who are not too familiar with traditional books. They like e-books, they like uh, uh, video games, they like music, they like their iPod, their iPad, mm -hmm. iPhones, and their, their droids. And I wanted to combine the, the concepts of traditional books with the new media. And so what, what I did was I wrote those 10 songs, the, the lyrics to the songs. I didn't write any music, but I wrote the, um, I, I wrote the, the sets of lyrics and about four or five of the songs have very important clues as to what's really going on in the story. Because as you know, it's story. got some twists and turns to it. <laughs> and then... Um, understatement, uh, but, but understatement. What I, <laughs> but then what I also wanted to do was, was draw some people into my books and to reading in general who might be more familiar with the music world. So I talked to a producer and we decided to form a company. We recorded all those songs 
with a wonderful artist, uh, Treva Blomquist, and a, a band of Nashville professional, uh, Nashville backup musicians, session musicians they're called. And we released that, and it's available wherever you can buy CDs, or it's on iTunes, um, all the uh, all the local uh, sources that you go to to buy CDs. Because she's Kaylee Town. Exactly. Kaylee Town is the name of the artist here, but no. And her big album is You're My Shadow. A uh, Your Shadow. Your Shadow. And that's what the 12 songs are supposedly from yeah. at the back of the book. Yeah. But you, you talk about twists and turns. We could sit here and wrap this thing up like spaghetti <laughs> based on the twist and turns, but you always back them up. Well, it, it, th there's a difference between uh, cheating and between legitimately fooling someone. Um, if you go to a, a magic show and you see the sleight of hand artist um, pulling a rabbit out of his hat is a little bit of a cliche, but you can see them doing things with coins or uh, with, with clothing, uh, even something as small as a match stick, you are absolutely sure it's in his hand, absolutely positive, and yet it shows up behind your ear. Now, he does not have an assistant run out toward you and scream, look out, there's something over there, because that would be cheating. What he does is he knows how to manipulate the object, the prop, whatever he's working with, so that you are legitimately fooled. And we feel this exhilarating sense of, he got me, I was watching him. I know what he had to do, but I didn't see him do it. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to cheat. And to um, and that's that. more enjoyable than figuring it out. You know, I a lot of people go and say, oh, I can figure it out. They can't fool me. I'll know who did it or whatever. And then, genuinely, when you are genuinely surprised, that's a bigger thrill than, than I, I think out. that's I think that's true, Jackie. One of the things I learned was that readers are really, really smart. And so when I first began writing these twisty books a long time ago, I decided I can't have just one surprise because people are going to get it, which is, as you suggest, a, a legitimate source mm -hmm. of, of some uh, enjoyment in the book. I still want to beat them. Yeah, I, I'm 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 pretty competitive. I still want to fool them all. So what I do is I put in, you know, roughly three, sometimes in the James Bond book we were talking about before, because I had some personal information about Bond there, I had four twists at the end. And it requires me to do a lot of outlining, to plan all that out ahead of time, so that when the reader gets to, say, the third twist and thinks, ah, I figured, I figured that out. And they do. And they, then, they do. then it then three pages later, I get it. I remember, Jeffrey, coming to hear you speak. I hope I'm not misquoting you on this. And you said that your outlines probably were longer than the actual book. Uh, probably not longer than the book, but they, they run uh, Very extensive. 150 pages or so. Um, I spent eight months working on the outline because novels are about structure as well as beautiful prose. I mean, haven't we all picked up a book where the, the lyricism of the words is it's just astonishing. We, we love reading uh, paragraph after paragraph, but then we ask ourselves, what happened? And nothing happened. Books are about always, I, sh I shouldn't say books, fiction, primarily commercial fiction, the sort I write. But I'll go so far as to say a lot of fine arts fiction too should be about making the reader wonder on every page what's going to happen. And you know, that sounds like uh, it disparages the concept of art. Well, I think, I think art is about drawing readers into the emotional experience of whether it's a book, a painting, a piece of music. And in, in novels, in storytelling, that's what does it. Make the reader wonder what's going to happen. And you need to structure a story to do that. Well, I was going to say that you write for smart readers, but that might sound a little elitist. But you write to challenge readers, mm -hmm. which which yeah. I appreciate. I think you know there there's some books that are just fluff, you know, and you get through. But then you get a book, and I've been with you so long now in your in your writing that I know as soon as I open that first page, you're going to challenge me all the way through to the end. Keep you going until the very the last very page. Well, and I think um, what's important for writers to keep in mind is that they have to write the sort of book that they enjoy reading. 
when I teach seminars in writing, I, uh, I, I always ask the, uh, I was going to say young people, they're not necessarily young people, but they're beginning writers, what, what do they want to write? And invariably, you get uh, zombies, uh, vampires, vampires. Um, English boarding schools with wizards. And I, I always say, do you read that sort of book, that category of book, and have you always read that category of book and been captivated by it? And 90% of them say no. It's just a good way to make a, 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 good, a good living at it. And I say, no, you've got to write what you in, enjoy reading. Otherwise, there's no point to it. But I, I want to quickly say, too, though, that in a, you, know, you write the Lincoln Rhyme series, you write the Catherine Dance series, but you also have written many standalone mm -hmm. books that do not have those characters, and they're just as enjoyable as these. Oh, thank you. you know, uh, I remember when, when I got into the Lincoln Rhyme, I thought, well, this is all it is. And then I did research and found out, oh my gosh, there's a whole you know, collection of books of Jeffries I haven't read, and went into them and had just as much fun with them. Oh, well, thank you. But, I mean, I love the, the, the continuing characters. But like you said, I don't want anybody to think, well, I can't pick this up because I haven't read the other three Catherine Dance books. No, this all. stands alone completely, as do the Lincoln Rhyme books. Yeah, all of my books are self-contained. And uh, for your viewers who aren't uh, familiar, Lincoln is the uh, uh, a forensic scientist who's uh, quadriplegic. He's paralyzed. And he's uh, very cerebral. He, he solves the crimes in his head. Uh, sort of uh, Sherlock Holmes, who was a, a model mm -hmm. for, for Lincoln Rhyme. Um, in every book, we learn how he became uh, a quadriplegic. And there is a uh, somewhat of an arc about his improving his condition, because of course anyone with that uh, severe disability would indeed want to, want to do that. But he, um, um, every book is, 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 is uh, largely standalone, and uh, people can pick them up in any order. Mm. You know, our time's about out, and I, I could talk forever, <laughs> you know, listen to what you have to say. But how long does it take to write a book? And, you know, I'm always complaining, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I'm always saying, when's the next one, when's the next one, when's the next one? How long does it take you between books? Yeah, I do a book a year, at least a book a year. Not enough. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> thank you, Jackie. In fact, now that you have said that, I will uh, deliver the news that next year I will have a new Lincoln Rhyme book yeah. that will be out called The Kill Room. That's the title of that one. Then I will have a uh, new collection of short stories. This is 2013 we're mm -hmm. talking, entitled Troubled in Mind. My editor said it's named after me. I appreciated that. <laughs> and then a, uh, another standalone, but a, a novella, about a 60,000 word Novel. All it's three next year. Fun, yeah. It's going to be. So, a, see, I listened to your your. Uh, your, oh, your I didn't know I had such power. That was it. So, don't ask for four books in the next year. Well, let me tell you, EXO, it's just out. Uh, you owe it to yourself to read this, Jeffrey. You are, you know, I don't know how to describe, you know, your your talent, but it's it's huge and you deliver every time. And I would like to see more movies. Yeah, they've been so would I. <laughs> I mean, come on, whoever's listening out there, more movies of these stories. My gosh! Well, now we just sold um, the um, book, my book Edge, which was a standalone. Just last year, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that sold to uh, the fellow who did uh, uh, Ken Olin, who did uh, Brothers and Sisters. Oh yeah, uh, a very good show. He's an actor Sally as well. As the He's director. an actor as well. Yes, and uh, uh, because I'm very interested in television now, television, Game of Thrones. Look at everything on HBO. Hatfields and McCoy. And on, on, on what I would say, the non-traditionally producing networks. Mm -hmm. now, now TNT and uh, the Sci-Fi Channel, they're doing some very good Absolutely. quality work. And uh, of course, uh, Showtime as well, in addition to the, the regular networks. So, so I would like to see some uh, much more TV work being done. Well, jump on it. Jeffrey, thank you so much for this time. Thank, thank you for what you do. Great enjoyment there. Thank you so much. Now.